This dirty old power supply goes to a high speed, I believe. And uh, the customer reported that the voltages were odd. The five volt voltages were odd. So let's fire it up and see. No smoke, that's a good thing. You can test the minus 100 and the plus 100 right away. And this pin should be five volts, but it's 12 volts. And that's what the customer had reported. So we can go uh, over here and let's test a few more. This should be minus 12. This should be plus 12. That one should be five. And all of these over here should be five too. And you can see they're 12. So my suspicion is that this LM723 here, which is made by a different manufacturer, is not working. And the easy way to test a 723 to see if it's working is to measure pin four and pin five. And if they're not the same, then that voltage regulator is dead, or at least it's not doing its job. So pin four is 1255, pin five is 5334. So let's get out some schematics. I'm gonna replace this 18,000 volt microfarad cap. And uh, there's a few other ones here, uh, C23, C3 and C7, they are on date east boards, but we're gonna do the same here for this. Williams board. These filter the high voltages, the minus 100 and plus 100. I never change those. You can change them if you want. It's just throwing parts at it though. It doesn't ever cause a problem with the game. And this one's for the coils too. I never change that one. So let's uh, do some work and be right back. So we are back with this power supply and here's a list of things that I did to it. I replaced all these small caps one, two, three, and I replaced the 18,000 microfarad cap, which is the main filter cap for the five volt circuit. Also installed a socket and replaced the LM723, and we are gonna find that that old 723 was in fact failed. Replaced the headers all the way around, removed the solder from the wafer headers here, and reflowed the new solder onto them. So let's power it up. The first thing we test is that the GI circuit is working, this little uh, test aid I constructed. And this button simulates the signal from the MPU to turn the back box GI on and off, or all the GI on and off. So that's working properly. So let's measure some voltages now. Minus 102 and plus 102, very good. It should be five volts, 5037. So we're back in business with our five volts not being 12 anymore. Minus 12, 12, not a surprise there, five. This should be 12. And we go through a number of pins here that are five, and those are all just fine. Down here we have coil power at tw or 20 volt power. Coil power, I believe, is right here. Yeah, at about 40 volts. And just for giggles, I'm going to measure pins four and five very carefully here. And you got 503 on pin four and 503 on pin five. So that voltage regulator, unlike the previous one that was in here, is now working 100%. FYI, uh, School of Hard Knocks has taught me to place some uh, connector housings on top of these voltage test points that I'm using. Uh, if you short the 100 and the minus 100 together, you're gonna destroy all the work that's been done to the board previously. So this really prevents you from doing that. So aside from washing this thing up, getting rid of all this crap here with my favorite degreaser, which is Castrol Super Clean, and then letting it dry for a good long time in the St. Louis sun here, uh, this board's good to go. Uh, Castrol Super Clean also takes off solder flux from the back so this thing is going to look pretty much like it looked from the factory except for my telltale yellow zip ties which i like to use thanks for sending it let's get high speed and car 509 or 504 back in business